do a review of the ADC really quick and the scheduler. Um, so remember, we've got these three things that we've got to understand or kind of think about with the ADC. We've got the input channels. These are the actual pins that are come out of the out to the world of the uh, the 28379 chip, right? Our processor. And those are the things that bring in our voltages, our input channels. And uh, they're labeled what? So for example, for D, A, D, C, N, D, zero. D1, you know, keeping that D2, all the way up to the D has D5, right? It's got a bunch of these inputs. And we worked with, in the, uh, in the homework, we were working with A and C, is that right? I believe, whatever it is. But then we have, so, so there's four separate ADC units. ADC A, ADC B, ADC C, and ADC D. You're asked in homework two to play with two of those. No, just one of those, right? Just one of those. Is it ADC A? I'm, I'm blanking. ADC A, okay? And if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at input pins ADC in A2, A3, and A4, or something like that, okay? We're not using ADC A0, A1 or ADC A5. That just happens to be what our pins are, our thing that we soldered are connected to, okay? All right, so we've got these pins, all right? So these are our channels. Then the, actually probably the more, well, these are obviously important, but what we focus on in the code a little bit more is what's called the start of conversions, SOCs. And these are the scheduling objects. And they, can, they schedule in what's called a round robin form. The lowest number SOC is the highest priority. If multiple things are triggered at the same time, multiple SOCs, the, the lowest order, the lowest number SOC starts first, and then the next number, and then high, next highest number, next highest number, okay? And in our case, like when we get to the end of homework problem four, you'll be asked to schedule three things, okay? And so you can pick any of those SOCs if you want. You could use SOC 11, 12, and 13 if you wanted to, but that would just be confusing you even more, wouldn't it? <laughs> just getting started with it. So of course, we'll just use SOC 0, 1, and 2. Okay, and so what we have to do is SOC0, we're going to set it up. It's going to have, oh, I'm going to run out of space. I'll move this down. Um, SOC0, get this out of the way. SOC0, we've got to set it up now yet, but what it's going to do is it's going to go first. Then SOC1 then SOC2, okay? And then what it does is it actually goes from here to here, here to here, and then really what it does is it goes here again, just saying, okay, now I'm waiting for a trigger again, okay? So it resets itself back to zero. No, it needs to start there when the next trigger happens. So what we do is we need to set up the trigger for each of these trigger. We also need to tell the SOC what channel to uh, convert. Now the, there's 16 SOCs for each ADC unit, for ADC A, ADC B, C, and D. We're in the homework only dealing with A, so we'll just think about those 16 SOCs. Again, we're only using three, okay? So I think I tell you in the lab what order, it doesn't matter too much, but you guys will see that in the lab. We need to also tell it the channel to convert one of these up here, okay? All right, so we, that information is needed. Which channel? 
what to trigger it what to trigger it and which channel what to trigger and which channel now if you read deep into this uh, this sequencer you can actually play with it and make certain SOCs have higher priority than other ones and all this kind of stuff again that's for really fast sampling of ADCs that need to be synchronized at the at those really fast times we're not worried about that at all if you saw any of that when you were reading we're going to use the default priorities SOC is the highest then SOC 1 then SOC 2 okay I think in the lab we do at most we use four SOCs when we get into the lab this week okay uh, we're never going to have the only time I've ever used 16 channels which is kind of interesting what you could do and it's it's kind of neat to do a filter you could set up all 16 SOCs to sample just one channel. You could have some uh, microphone signal or some other noisy signal coming into your, a microphone probably not a good idea, but maybe some other kind of feedback signal that's got a lot of noise on it. One way to get rid of that noise is to take 16 readings and average them all together. What do you think about that? That would, uh, that would give you uh, more samples every uh, say one millisecond and you can average those 16 values together and maybe get a little bit cleaner signal so you could again not for a homework but you could set up SOC 1 2 3 4 5 6 all the way up to 15 to all sample say ADC in a2 and you trigger all 16 of those at the same time it'll sample a, the ADC a2 once and then the, for the SOC 1 it'll sample again for 2 it'll sample again and all those results values will be there for you to read and then average together together to give you one maybe less noisy signal like an average does that kind of make sense so you can play with this these uh, these uh, SOCs to do some things that are pretty fancy again we're not doing that in this homework okay so we this is the information that you've got to give to each of those SOCs yes you could trigger these with different sources. I've not really played with that um, uh, and exactly what would happen. Um, I, I'm sure it handles it very well because it's all set up for that. There's multiple ways to trigger these SOCs. So obviously if one's triggered and then you trigger another one while another one's converting. I'm sure that conversion is going to complete first and then um, complete first and then the other one that got triggered is going to go run. Things like that. You had a question in the back? Can they be triggered at the same time? They sure can. And that's the way we're going to be doing it. We are going to be using the same trigger. We are going to be using in the homework, is it EPWM4 or is it 5? 4? Yeah. So we're setting up EPWM4 to trigger all of these at the same time. Okay? What is it doing? It's simply waiting for the TV counter value, right, that counts up at our whatever rate, depending on the divide, counts up, 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 until it each reaches the PRD value. When the counter reaches the PRD value, boom, that's the trigger for all these SOCs. Does it all at the same time. And now, since they're triggered all at the same time, who runs first? The highest priority, SOC 0. Then when it's done, automatically SOC 1 runs. When it's done, automatically SOC2 runs. And then it goes back so it's ready for the next trigger to start at zero again. Now, when it's done, what happens? When each of those are done, the value converted gets put in the results registers. And this is always a little bit of a confusion. You kind of, you know, if SOC0 is sampling A2, you're tempted in your mind to think, well, that may be in results two, right? Since it's channel two. But again, no. The results registers is talking about which SOC gave that result. Okay? So SOC's result is in results zero. So SOC zero, result zero. Results one has SOC one's conversion. And results 2 has SOC 2's value. Okay? 
Now, also, what we want to do is have an interrupt when this guy is done. This is our last SOC to convert. So there is a, a register in uh, the settings for your um, ADC, okay, that says int1 select, int1 sel. What you put there is the last SOC to convert. And that number, if you want to use two, you would set it equal to two. Okay. Now, technically, you could set it to zero. And it would give you an interrupt when SOC zero is done. But what's the problem with that? If you jump in there, yeah, what's the problem with that? Yeah. This guy's not done yet, and this guy's not done yet. So the results register, it's kind of interesting. What would the results register have? It would actually have the reading from the previous one millisecond ago when you got into your interrupt. So it almost looked like it's working, but technically you're getting a millisecond old data. Would that kill you? Probably not, but we, don't, we, want, we want to get the most current data. That makes sense, right? So we've got to tell the interrupt to happen SOC2. Now, um, there's one last confusion. As I said, there's three things. There's your channels, there's your SOCs, and finally, there is the interrupts. Oh my gosh. Interrupts. Okay, there are the interrupts. We have for each ADC, and let's we're talking about A, there are four interrupt sources. A D C uh, A1, A D C A2, A D C A3, A D C A4. Again, just giving you versatility. Just for now, don't think about these other ADC interrupts. Just know we're always just using one. Meaning, we're going to set it up so that when SOC2 is done converting, we want, to in, we want to call or activate the first interrupt of ADC A. Okay? It just, again, maybe you had... You have three banks of sensors over here, another three banks of sensors over here, and this one can only be read every 100 millisecond. This one should be read every millisecond. You could set up SOCs for A. Probably wouldn't do it this way. I'd probably use ADC-B if I had two banks of sensors, right? But they make it set up so that just with ADC-A, you could have these three over here convert and give you one interrupt. And you could have these three uh, convert when every 100 milliseconds and give you a second interrupt. Okay? That's what that's all for. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. So just, just knowing, you know, they just give you all sorts of versatility, which is nice. Which is nice when you, you know, later on, you're really trying to do something more complex with this chip. You have all this versatility. But it makes it confusing for the first time person using it. That's the problem, isn't it? When you have all this versatility, it makes it confusing for us. Okay? What do you think? Is that a good overview for the ADC? Do we have some, yeah, questions? Uh, for, the SOC, for every SOC, do you always have the ESC? Yes. SOC, yeah. That's a little confusing in the data sheet, isn't it? An SOC, when it's done converging, converting, it creates an end of conversion. Right? That just means the conversion's done. That's just like a signal in the processor saying, hey, the conversion's done. And what does that do? Well, it can generate interrupt, or it can just tell SOC1 to go, right? SOC1 is waiting for SOC0's EOC, right? And so it's just, all, it's just another signal they had you think about as you were reading the data sheet. Yep. It's not another, it's not another, not another thing, right? It's just a signal going through the through the chip saying conversion's done. Yep. Any other questions about that? 